Welcome back, everybody. We have gone through an amazing journey. We have looked at so many different statistical techniques to work with our quantitative interval ratio data, and it's been amazing. But now, for our final lesson, we are gonna switch gears, and we are now gonna look at what you can do with nominal categorical data. So come with me on the final leg of our journey. Let's get into it. In this short lesson, we are going to discuss how probability is weird, you'll see. And we're going to look at contingency tables. We'll look at marginal, joint, and conditional probabilities. So let's carry on. So probability is kind of weird. Let's investigate. Sophie is a 30-year-old and majored in engineering. As a student, she participated in protests, advocating for equality, and was deeply concerned with social justice. Which is more probable? Sophie is a social media influencer, or Sophie is a social media influencer and is active in the feminist movement. Which one of these two do you think is more probable? Which did you guess, A or B? It's really A, because if we think about it, being a social media influencer, that's one thing, and let's say the probability of that is like 0.1. But the probability of being a feminist, let's say it's 0.2, so there's a higher probability of being a feminist than a social media influencer, but we're saying both of them. And first you have to be that social media influencer and then being a feminist is a subset of being one of those influencers. So you're even more rare than just being a social media influencer. And when you're doing probabilities, you don't just add the two together, like 0.1 and 0.2 to get 0.3 probability, 30% chance. You have to actually multiply them. So here we would take that 0.1, the chance of being a social media influencer, 0.2, chance of being a feminist, and we multiply them and get 0.02. Now the chances are only 2%. So probability can be a little bit weird. It's not always super intuitive. Sometimes we let little details kind of sway us and our logic can be flawed. Contingency tables. Let's look at some contingency tables. First off, what is a contingency table? A contingency table is a table that has two categorical variables represented. And each cell, each one of these squares here, has a frequency, which remember is just like the count or the tally of seeing certain levels of two categorical variables. So let's go and investigate. Let's look at this table in more depth. We have test grades, A through D, and we have studied and didn't study. What kind of variables are we working with here? This whole lesson is about categorical variables. We are dealing with two categorical variables here. We have test grade, A, B, C, D, and we have studied versus didn't study. They're both two types of categories, and the numbers here represent how many people satisfy both conditions. So if we look at people who studied and got an A, there were 11 people. People who didn't study and got an A, there was one person. Let's look at marginal probabilities first. So you might have noticed I added some more numbers here. I have 38, which is the number of people who studied regardless of what grade they got, and 32 people who did not study regardless of what grade they got. We also have 12 people got an A, 21 people got a B, 19 people got a C, and 18 people got a D, regardless of whether they studied or not. I'm just counting them all up all the way down or all the way across. And 70 is the overall total. So what percent of students studied and what percent of students received a B? How would you go about figuring this out? Take a moment and look at this and try to figure it out before you continue. So for the first question, what percent of students studied? Well, we know that 38 people studied and there were 70 people total, so you just divide 38 by 70 and we end up with 0.54 or 54% of people studied. We can also look at the proportion of students who got a B. We had 21 over 70, that was 0.3, so 30% of people got a B regardless if they studied or not. These are called marginal probabilities and it's the probability of seeing someone of a certain category or certain condition regardless of the other variable. So here again, you can also kind of remember that we're in the margins, so it's a marginal probability. Hey, now let's try a different question. What is the probability I select someone at random who did not study and they got an A? What do I need to do now? Which numbers do I use and where should I look? Think about it, think about it, pause me. So what is the probability I select someone at random that did not study and got an A? Well, let's go and find the cell that satisfies both of those conditions. So we're looking for somebody who got an A and somebody who did not study. So we have one person who meets that criteria, so you should study. What do we do with this one? We're going to divide by the total, 70, and we end up with 0.014 or about 1.4% of people did not study and got an A. 
probably going to be lower than that in real life, so make sure you study. This is called joint probability, and it's the probability of two things happening, like getting an A and not studying. Now let's look at one more type of probability that's worded very differently. Of those that got a D, what percent studied? Of those who did not study, what percent got a D? You might be thinking this is asking the same question, but it's not. What is the difference? How are they different? How would you go about answering these questions? Really take a pause for this one, because this is a very interesting type of probability. The last type of probability we're going to talk about is conditional probability. Now this is a bit different in that we are conditioning on a particular situation or something that has already kind of happened. So of those that got a D, what percent studied? So are we looking at everybody now? No, we're only now looking at those who got a D, and there are 18 of them. Then we're looking for what percent studied. So now we find that situation that person who got a D and they studied, and there were three. So if you think about it, it's the joint frequency over the marginal total. So remember the joint frequency is somebody who got a D and who studied, so it's this one. But we're dividing now by that marginal total of those that got a D rather than all of the group, which would be 70. So let's evaluate these. Of those that got a D, what percent studied? So again, those that got a D and they studied divided by the total number of people that got a D, because we only care about of those that got a D, so this is our denominator. 3 divided by 18, we have 0.16, 16%. Now let's look at the next one. Of those that didn't study, what percent got a D? So now, what is my denominator? Of those that did not study, we're looking at all these people here, and we have 32 is our new total. But we're saying of those that got a D and did not study, so we're looking for this one right here. We have 15 divided by 32, and we end up with 47%. So 47% of those people that did not study got a D. Now they sound like the same questions, I know. They're not. A very helpful tip is to identify your denominator first. So if you see something like of a certain condition or of those that blah, 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 given that somebody got a D, those are all saying we only want to look at this subgroup. And that subgroup is basically the condition. It's what we are conditioning on. So let's go through all these again, but now I filled them all out. These are all the probabilities of observing just one certain situation. So 54% of people studied, 46% of people didn't. I hope that's not the case. Then we have 17% got an A, 30% got a B, 27% got a C, 26% got a D. So again, with marginal probability, you're just going to go all the way across and add up all these to get a margin. Remember, we're out in the margins, a total. And you divide by the overall total, which in this case was 70. And here are all of the joint probabilities. So the probability of having an A and studying was 15%, getting a B and studying 24%, uh, not studying and getting a C 17%. So this is the and situation. Joint probabilities, you'll see the word and in there. Probability of an A and studied, which would be again 15%. And we're still looking at the overall total. Our denominator is still everybody in the group. Now with the conditional probabilities, we have two different ways that we can condition here, right? We can condition on the fact that somebody studied or did not study. So we have 38 of people who studied, 32 who didn't. So now we can go and condition on all those. So given that somebody studied, what's the probability they got a D? This one right here. We have an 8% chance. Given that somebody did not study, what is the chances that they got a D? 47%. So all these values, all the cells in here, I divided them by the totals from over here, the row sums. And we are conditioning on whether somebody studied or not. Conversely, we can also get the conditional probabilities conditioning on a particular grade. So here, the denominators are all of the values column summed. So all the people that got an A, 12, they got a B, 21, and so on. So given that somebody got an A, what is the probability that they studied? We would be looking at, given that somebody got an A, probability they studied, 91% chance that if you got an A, you studied. If you got a D, what's the probability that you did not study? 83%. So see how different those probabilities are. Given a certain situation changes probabilities dramatically. So let's do a little recap. We have marginal probabilities, which is the probability of seeing one certain thing, 
nothing very special there. We have joint probability, which is the probability of seeing two things happen. And you'll usually see the word and. Got a D and didn't study. Now conditional probabilities, that's the probability of seeing one certain thing given that you already saw the other thing. So given that someone didn't study, what is the probability they got a D? Contingency tables and their associated probabilities are descriptive in nature, but what if I want to statistically test if two categorical variables are, let's say, independent from each other? Is your test grade independent of whether you study or not? It's not. To test this, we need the chi-squared test of independence, and that's where we're going next. I will see you there.